Uh, so without further ado, uh, APIs. So most of us on the call know what an API is or an application programming interface, but why are they becoming so increasingly used by organizations? Well, there's a couple different areas and why. And I think the first thing is really understanding that the world and the digital world runs everything on APIs. Pretty much every modern application uses an API or actually is an API in itself. And this explosive growth has really been accelerated because organizations are going uh, kind of that buzzword through digital transformation or moving to the cloud, for example. And these initiatives really allow development, engineering, uh, and the business in general to develop faster, to be able to expand into different areas of business, but also be able to connect to other uh, internal processing tools to make things more efficient for employees, but also being able to um, interact with other external uh, vendors and companies and products to make sure that data is flowing. Um, and again, business is um, ever increasing. So with this though, also comes a challenge, as we know. As APIs grow, APIs are also pretty vulnerable and they're not necessarily easy to protect by nature. And when we think about this, a lot of it comes down to visibility. You know, when Brett and I are talking to a lot of different customers and prospects alike, a lot of the times it really starts with visibility. Do I have access or do I even know what is in my environment? Where are my APIs? Who owns those APIs? What is their intention? What is their use? And it's a real struggle because we have things such as rogue and zombie APIs, which is really APIs that were created for maybe a purpose back in the day, but were never decommissioned or they're shadow, meaning they don't know they even exist. But also with that, we're also seeing API vulnerabilities uh, more and more increasingly come up. Uh, one that comes top of the mind is, you know, vulnerabilities that are addressed that allow attackers or hackers to come in and be able to attack organizations. Um, I, again, I just mentioned recently in the news, we have one of the world's largest uh, telecommunications company uh, just this past week in the news. Now, still a lot more detail to come through there, um, but from what it looks like, it was just an API that was out there that had access to PII information, such as name uh, and home address. And, you know, again, more information comes, so we can't speculate too soon on this, but 37 million records were lost. And while somebody might say, oh, it's just names, it's just emails, we can get that from, you know, any, uh, you know, dark net web base and get that. It's, it's becoming a serious problem where we're seeing organizations um, not only losing access to information, but it's really hurting brands' reputations. Um, never mind the compliance regulations that uh, potentially could be targeted at this. So as we look at this expansion growth, it's also really important to understand where those attacks are coming from. So as we mentioned before, we have traditional, that traditional OWASP top 10 uh, that we've always kind of known for the industry, right? We've got the BOLA attacks or broken object level access. Uh, we've got injection, misconfigurations. But what we're starting to see is attackers are expanding. They're becoming a little bit more sophisticated and a little bit more involved. And one of the things that we're seeing is these attack patterns are starting to combine multiple different avenues to target organizations. There's a couple of different reasons why. A lot of it could be distracting a security team to go and focus in one area while they're actually probing another part of a business or a server or an application. Um, and also from there, right, what that allows attackers to do is gain valuable insight and information. I think the game here, uh, very similar to what we call APT attacks, is the low and slow, right? Can I get into an organization undetected and go at that and to get the crown jewels, right? To get the information that we want. So we're gonna talk a lot more about what these attacks are, where we're going. Uh, we'll actually share some use cases from our actual ThreadX team about kind of how we're stopping uh, these uh, incidents from happening to organizations.